Here he is again, folks. Dizzy Dean. Brought to you by the makers of Johnson's Wax for Car New. A wax-fortified auto polish that cleans and polishes your car in one easy application. Hi, everybody. Front and center, you outfielders. Uh, I'm going to have some advice to you fire chasers today. So relax and get ready to do some remembering what I tell you. Yes, and that's just one of the things Dizzy Dean will tell you today and every Saturday at this time. This is Frank Eschen, who knows that Dizzy Dean knows what he's talking about. Dizzy will answer letters from the mailbag, he'll spin a few baseball yarns, he'll do some prognosticating, and he'll tell you of the big league picture as he sees it. And first off today, we have the mailbag, Diz. What did the postman bring this time, Frank? Well, it was a very heavy make of Seattle. Mr. McCormick was interested in your comment on Bob Lemmon's in a recent broadcast. He wants to know if you think many ball players start out in the wrong position and how it happens that occasionally some manager does see unsuspected talent and put a player on the right path. To get right down to the point, Diz, have there been many cases like that of Bob Lemon? Frank, I guess Mr. McCormick's right. I reckon there's been lots of ball players who never made it in the big leagues because they picked the wrong job in the first place. But I can think of several who got straightened out. Take Bucky Walters, for instance. He came up as an infielder, but he wasn't much of a hitter. And I guess he'd have drifted out of the big leagues without ever getting into the big dough. If that great little catcher, Jimmy Wilson, hadn't seen that Bucky could become a great pitcher. And what was it, Diz, that first attracted Jimmy's attention to Bucky Walters' potentialities as a pitcher? Uh, what was that word, Frank? Uh, potentialosis? Uh, potentialities, Diz. You know, the qualifications that led Wilson to believe that Walters, the mediocre infielder, might become a pitcher. Well, why didn't you say that in the first place? It was this way. <laughs> Walter was playing the infield and Jimmy was using him at third base. Jimmy noticed that the first baseman was having trouble with Bucky's throws. And when he asked the first baseman, he told Jimmy that Bucky's throws was taking off. Doing what? Taking off? Yes, Frank, taking off. You know, one throw would rise, another would curve. That's what they call taking off, Frank. The trade calls it throwing a live ball. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place, Diz? But go ahead, go on. Well, the rest of the story was just a matter of time, Frank. I mean, until Walters got control. And when he got it, boy, he was hard to beat. All he had to do when he pitched against the Cardinals was to walk out there on the mound. Usually the Cardinals was beat right there. Well, Diz, did Walters have trouble with his control? I'll say he did. He was pitching an exhibition game against us in Florida, his first spring as a, as a pitcher. And I'll never forget it. He walked two men, hit one, and then cleared the bases with two wild pitches. <laughs> Boy, the batters wasn't digging in at that there plate when Bucky was pitching. When I went to bat, it, he liked to took off the peak of my cap with the first one. Then, by some chance, he got two strikes on me. I'm out outside. But I had enough of hitting against Walters for that time, and when the umpire said, ball two, I said, ball two, nothing. That ball was right in there, and I am out. <laughs> Glad to get out, huh? Yes, sir. But this, when Walters got that valuable thing, control, he really had it, didn't he? Yes, Frank, and after you get control, unless you can just overpower the hitters, you've got to learn to throw that ball where you want. You gotta mix up your pitches, wasting one now and then. Like one game Walters pitched against us after he was beginning to find himself. We decided in the clubhouse that Walters would be trying to get that first ball in there. So we went out to swing at the first pitch. And we got off to a good start. Pepper Martin hits the first pitch for a single. Jack Rothrock hits the next pitch for an infield hit. And Frankie Fresh doubles on the next one, and then Joe Medrick hits the fourth pitch right out of the bar. Four pitches, and we got four runs. Jimmy Wilson, managed the fillers, fillers, run out and says to the young catcher, Bill Atwood, what's the matter? Ain't Bucky got his stuff? And the young catcher cracks back at Wilson. How the world should I know, Jimmy? I ain't caught a ball yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, Diz, infielders seem to make good pitchers. Now, there was uh, Bob Lemon you told us about a couple of weeks ago, and Bucky Walters today. Does it ever work the other way? Yes, Frank, occasionally a pitcher throws away the toe plate. And plays every day. Uh, you heard of a fella named Babe Ruth. Ah, the best example yet, Diz. Then there was Chick Hapey, the old cardinal. Chick was taking part in batting practice at Sportsman's Park in St. Louis with a lot of other rookies. He kept slamming the ball against the fences. Branks Ricky was in the stands, and he says to one of the scouts, Who is that boy just hit that ball? And the scout says, That's Chick Hapey, a pitcher. And Ricky says, You mean he was a pitcher. Tell him he's an outfielder now. And Chick become one of the best outfielders 
because he could hit that ball on a, a, a mile. Well, Biz, uh, I'd like to tell the men now how they can make a hit with their families. On Sunday, I guess all of us like to drive down the street in a clean, sparkling car. But when it comes to cleaning it, well, there's always a temptation to stall and putter around the house and do anything rather than face that tough job. Well, if anybody ain't using car new, I'll say you ain't really pitching. I'm doing my best, Diz. Doing my best to let everybody know that Johnson's Wax Fortified Carnu solves the auto cleaning problem. No doubt about it, men. Carnu makes that job much easier because it cleans and polishes in one application. First, the special cleaning ingredients in Johnson's Carnu soften up and carry away that stubborn road film that collects on your car. Water can't touch that film, but Carnu gets it quick. And second, Carnu polishes your car. So it shines from radiator to taillight. That's because Carnu is wax fortified. All you do is apply Johnson's Carnu, let it dry to a white powder, and then wipe it off. Rub it on, wipe it off. That's all there is to it. So as soon as this program's over, why not drop in on your dealer or the nearest filling station and get some Johnson's wax fortified Carnu? Carnu works so quickly you can easily do the job before sundown. And how will your car look? Say, that paint job will sparkle like new. The chrome trim will glisten and gleam. Your whole car will have that Sunday shine. Now it's time for Dizzy Dean, the coach. You ready to tell those outfielders about chasing flies, Diz? All set, Frank. And right off, I'll set it up in four main points. First, learn to play the hitters. Second, be ready to do the right thing when the ball is hit your way. Third... Have in mind exactly what the situation is. And fourth, learn to play with sunglasses before you break into a league where you may have to play the sun field. And now I'll take up them points. First again, most hitters have a habit of hitting to a certain field. Learn about that every, way, every time you get a new hitter comes to bat. Move where you think he's most likely to hit the ball. And second, on each hitter... Make up your mind where you'll throw the ball if you catch a fly or feel a base hit. Don't put off your thinking till the ball is in your hand. If you do that kind of thinking, after you get the ball, you're, you're weak in your ball club. And third, keep in mind the score and how many are on base and what bases they're on. If your team has a good lead, you may let a run score to keep a man from going to third. If you're only one run ahead, you'll play in close and make a throw to the plate to cut off that tying run if it's all possible. I can't sum that up better than to say, keep the situation in mind at all times. And about number four and them sunglasses, you'll be glad you take that advice. I've seen many an outfielder come up from the minors without even having worn sunglasses. It's true they play most of their games in the minors at night. But learn to wear sunglasses just the same. Get yourself a pair of sunglasses, you young outfielders, and learn to use them. They may keep you from making an extra trip for those bush legs. Ah, that's very fine advice, Diz, but I think you've been unusually serious today. How about one of those inimitable baseball stories? Dizzy Dean, the storyteller, huh? Okay, Frank, uh, how about an umpire story? That's fine. Go right ahead. Well, this is about me and a veteran umpire named Cy Fairman. He was in a close game with the Giants, and I was on first base when Frankie Frisch hit a clean single to right. I was a pretty good base runner, Frank if I do say so myself. Now, I really took off. I rounded second, tore for third, and me and the cloud of dust and the ball all arrived at third at the same time. I thought I'd made it, but umpire Furman called me out. But before I could get up and squawk about the decision, Furman started talking and brushing me off. He brushed the dust off my shoulders, and he said, uh, Diz, that was a great piece of base running. Fish couldn't have run no faster. And that slide... Dizzy Ty Cobb couldn't have done no better. But Dizzy, Ott made a great throw on the play, and you're out. <laughs> I didn't have the heart to say no more to Furman, but on the way to the dugout, I passed Bill Clem, who was working at the plate, and I said, uh, Bill, did you see that play? And Bill said, uh, yes, Jerome, I seen it. Well, I started telling Bill that I was safe and that Jackson hasn't tagged me. And I beat the throw when Bill broke in and said, uh, Jerome, remember me? I am Bill Clem, behind the plate. If you want to get on somebody about that play at third, talk to Mr. Furman. And I said, no, sir, Bill. I couldn't say nothing to Cy. 
You know, he was so nice to me that if I'd had a quarter in my pocket, I'd have tipped him. <laughs> <laughs> Always the kind-hearted, generous Dizzy Dean. Right now, though, it's Dizzy Dean, the reporter. And what has your rapt attention right now, Diz? What do you see in that crystal ball? You mean you want me to do uh, some pros- uh, promosicating, uh, Frank? Uh... If, you, if you care to, Diz. But first of all, let's take a look at that big league picture. Well, I'd say that right now, Frank, Lou Boudreaux and Connie Mack is on the spot. What I mean is that two hot clubs is barking at the heels of the Cleveland Indians and the Athletics. The Red Sox are the hottest club, and the way things is right now, it looks like it might be an all-Boston series next October. But the Yankees are staying up cl- close enough. I wouldn't be surprised if the situation is turned around in another couple of weeks. I mean, I expect the Red Sox and the Yankees to be fighting it out soon for the first spot in the American League. Diz, what do you think has been responsible for the upsurge of the Red Sox? It ain't any one thing, Frank. It takes power, defense, and pitching to keep a club going at top speed. It looks like a case of everything starting to click for the Red Sox. And here's a funny thing about it, Frank. Everybody figured Ted Williams would have to carry that ball club. But Ted's been out for about 15 games, and the Red Sox kept on winning. Nine straights up to today. And Stan Spence hasn't been doing too much hitting. But even with Williams out and Spence in a slump, Boston's been moving right along. You know, Frank, most of the experts figured the Yankees would win this year. They figured New York would have better pitching. But right now, the Yankee pitcher is not so hot, while Boston's pitching has been getting better. Jack Kramer has been a big help. Vern Stevens has been pounding that ball. Ellis Kinder won another one the other day. Frank, that big winner deal with the Browns is paying off at last. And is, it seems to me, too, that Joe McCarthy rates a hand for getting that club going. You said it, Frank. It would have been easy for Joe to get panicky, the way the Red Sox started. But he just kept quiet. He knew he had the power. He knew he had a good ball club. He stayed with the boys, and now they're coming through. But uh, you think the Yankees will fight it out for first place. You expect the Yankee pitching to improve this? It could, Frank. Bucky Harris has pitching who might start clicking any day. Rashi, Reynolds, and Lopat could put together a winning streak if Frank Shea could find himself. And in the uh, National League. Uh, that won't get exciting, Frank, until uh, somebody cuts down that uh, wide space between the Boston Braves and second place. Mm-hmm. Billy Southworth got himself a pretty fat cushion right now, Frank. He looks like a winner to me. Well, so much for the Swami reporter. But now, Diz, would you care to say something about that Cleveland-Washington row the other night? You know, the one that resulted in the sort of a man-bite-dog news that an umpire had been suspended? <laughs> Well, go ahead, Frank. Put me on the spot. Don't you know there ain't never been no open season on umpires? Seriously, though, Frank, here's an idea. Them umpires take a lot through a season. Pitchers beef if a close one is called a ball. The batter beefs if it's called a strike. I imagine if even old dears would get fed up on that if I were an umpire. But let's suggest one big free day for the umpires. On that day, let the umpires beef at the ball players. Let them ball him out if they strike out or if they get caught off a base. Let the umpires throw dust and kick masks and rolls and bags. Frank, I believe the umpires got a day of freedom coming to them. It is. I certainly second that motion. And if the umpires learn about this, they'll be coming right back to you for more help. And, folks, we hope you'll be right back with us at this same time next week to listen to Dizzy Dean. He's brought to you by Johnson's Car New... The wax-fortified auto polish that cleans and polishes your car in one easy application. Rub it on, car new cleans your car. Gets the road film that water won't touch. Wipe it off, and car new polishes your car. Makes it shine like new. So zip over your car with Johnson's Car New and make it shine like a new dollar. Remember to give your car that Sunday shine. Rub it on, wipe it off, is all you do with Car New. This is old Diz. Hope all you folks are in the stands this time next Saturday. I'll be pitching across again for Johnson's Car New. This is Frank Ashen saying goodbye until next Saturday for the makers of Johnson's Wax Fortified Auto Polish Car New. This program came to you from KSD St. Louis. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>